This is U.S. Representative Marilyn Strickland from the 10th Congressional District of Washington State. I want to thank the South Sound Military and Communities Partnerships for having me here today and for the work that you do every day to support the South Sound, our service members, and their families. During my time in Congress, I worked tirelessly to improve their lives as well. And through my work on the House Armed Services Committee, I've been able to push forward legislation that will make a tangible difference in their lives. Just a few weeks ago, we passed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill that will bring much needed resources long overdue to repair dangerous roads and bridges, to replace lead pipes so people can have access to clean drinking water, to expand access to high-speed internet, make investments in electric vehicle charging stations, and making historic investments in mass transit and so much more. These investments will have a direct impact on the 10th Congressional District and the work of SSMCP. I led a letter to President Biden and later to the Appropriations Committee urging an increase in the Defense Community Infrastructure Program and helped secure $75 million in funding for the fiscal year 22 Defense Appropriations Bill. This represents an increase of $10 million. Washington State's 10th Congressional District is home to over 75,000 veterans and more than 30,000 active duty service members. We live in one of the fastest growing regions in the entire United States. And with this comes a housing shortage. The National Defense Authorization Act did include my amendment to examine wait times for on-base housing. It directs the Department of Defense to provide a briefing on wait times for housing located on military installations in competitive housing markets like ours. It will create a strategy to address housing demand and determine the threshold for acceptable wait times. I'm also continuing my work on the North Clear Zone issue, including leading a letter to the Army to resolve this issue. After my letter was sent, the issue was elevated within the Army and the first transaction is currently scheduled to be concluded by December. My staff and I are monitoring very closely the Nisqually Delta I-5 project, and we appreciate hearing from members of SSMCP about it, and we support a long-term solution that will address the impacts of climate change. With the impacts of increased lowland rainfall and sea level rise and flooding, we know that this could, be shut, this could shut everything down and create a national security and readiness issue. We want to make sure that we're paying close attention, working with the Washington State Department of Transportation and any partners to ensure that we're staying ahead of this project. Specific to the National Defense Authorization Act, I did help get in there a bipartisan Military Hunger and Prevention Act, supporting an equitable housing allowance for military families, supporting off-base housing solutions by examining rental partnerships programs, and also doing what we can to shield service members from unimbursed moving expenses. Service members and their families move every two to three years. and We want to make sure that the Secretary of Defense submits a report that talks about how many of these expenses are reimbursed and making sure that we're making our families whole. We also want to connect military families with local nonprofit organizations. When families move to an area and they're brand new, they're sometimes completely unaware of the myriad of services that exist. We want to make sure that they have easy access to them and understand exactly how they can benefit from these connections. We're also working to examine temporary lodging reimbursements when relocating to competitive housing markets. My amendment directs the Secretary of Defense to submit a report regarding the extent to which military families are aware of and have access to joint travel regulation reimbursements. I'm also in strong support of a military spouse employment and addressing employment discrimination. I submitted an amendment that requires a report on employment discrimination against military spouses in the civilian job market. In addition, I'm supporting the legacy, contributions, and sacrifices of American Indian and Alaska Natives in the armed forces. In closing, I want to say that as Congress continues to do its work every day, passing the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, focusing on the National Defense Authorization Act, please know that my office and I are here to support you. As our region continues to grow, I will also be looking to organizations like SSMCP to ensure that we are listening to your needs and that we're able to respond to them. So thank you for a chance to be here today. I wish I could be with you in person, and we will also submit a lengthy detailed list of some of the policies I described today.
Thanks so much again for the work you do on behalf of our military families and our communities.